hello grade 11 welcome to our channel my name is Vedelin Nkosi in this video I'm working on a previous question paper the question is based on animal nutrition so this question paper was written in the Eastern Cape on November 2023 it's for life sciences paper one if you see here this is the diagram of an alimentary canal the questions are based on the alimentary canal so here are the questions this question contain five sub questions so i will be working on these questions and i will explain to you how you answer the questions in an examination so maybe if you want to attempt this question before you see the solution then you can post the video here so everything here is visible you see this is the diagram and then here are the questions so without wasting more time let's get to it so here are the diagram so before i start to attempt the questions let me give the labels so i will firstly give the labels then after i will attempt the questions so number a it's a gallbladder so if you see here here we have a, a liver just next to the liver it's a gallbladder so number a it's a gallbladder and then number b this is a stomach so if you see here this is the esophagus then esophagus transport food to the stomach then this one it's a stomach so yeah and then number c Number C, it's a valve. So this valve between the stomach and the small intestine or the duodenum. The duodenum is the first part of the small intestine. So this valve is called pyloric sphincter. It's the name of this valve. It's closing if the, the digestion must take place inside the stomach. Then if the chime has to go out, then travel to the small intestine. And then it allows the chime to move out. And then number D, this number, this portion of number D, we see this circled here. This is a bile duct. So this duct, it transports bile from the gallbladder to the small intestine. So we call it a bile duct. And then number E, this is a leaf like a part is called a pancreas. So we know a pancreas falls under endocrine gland and the exocrine gland. And then number F, like I said, it's a liver. So number F, it's a liver. So these are the labels that are needed in this question. So uh, now let's attempt the questions. So yeah, this is how we are going to work. So the questions will appear here and then the solutions will appear here so before every question or every solution i will explain what happened so first of all let's label our diagram so here are the labels and then let's get to the first question so the first question say identify so number a say identify part a so we have to identify part a so part a it's a gal blood and then 2.1.1 number a the answer is a gall bladder so number a it's a gall bladder the the function of a gall bladder is to store bile and then number b say identify part c then part c is that valve that i just talked about it's a pyloric sphincter so the pyloric sphincter is this valve it's closing the stomach so it prevent food from leaving the stomach to the small intestine before they are ready to leave then these are the answers for 2.1.1 then next question the next question say give three general functions of the gland f so this is gland f it's a liver so we have to give the functions of the liver so a liver has a couple of functions i'm not going to label only three i'll label more than three 
2.1.2 so function number one deliver its secret bile so by secreting bile we mean it produces bile so a bile it produces in the liver and then it is stored in the gallbladder so don't make a mistake liver produces bile and then the bile it is stored in the gallbladder so if the bile is in the, in the small intestine then it is released from the gallbladder so this is one of the functions of the liver it secretes bile and then another function it converts glucose to glycogen so this is another functions of the liver it converts glucose to glycogen and then it is stored as glycogen and then another function it converts excess glucose to fat so this is another function of a, a liver and then another function it stores minerals such as iron and then another function it is stores vitamin a vitamin d and then vitamin b12 so these vitamins are stored in the liver and then another function the amination of excess amino acids this is the function of the liver and then the last function the liver is detoxify certain harmful substance and make them harmless so if maybe there is some harmful substance that we ate and then a liver will try to make it harmless so these are the functions of the liver so you must write only three and then the next question the next question say the acid produces in the b does not destroy its walls explain why is this possible so but b is a stomach and then the acid that is produced in the stomach it's a gastric juice or the hydro hydrochloric acid but the hydrochloric acid that is produced in the stomach is not damaging the stomach holes the reason for that is in the stomach there is a gland that is secreting a mucus so a mucus it's a thick fluid that is secreted by a mucus gland and then this gland it stands between the wall and the acid so it prevents the acid to touch the wall so that is why this acid is not destroying the wall of the stomach so to answer this question then 2.1.3 can see the mac the mucus gland secrete a thick mucus on the mucosa layer so mucosa layer is the all of of this stomach and then this layer of, of the stomach is called mucosa layer so if the mucus gland secrete a thick mucus on the wall and then this layer that will act as a barrier between the acid and the wall of the stomach that is why this acid is not able to destroy the wall of the stomach because there is a layer in between so this is how you will answer this question and then get to the next question the next question say explain why the blockage of part d will disrupt the digestive process in the small intestine so you know the part d is a bile duct so if bile duct is blocked and then we have to explain what will happen so first of all we need to know the functions of bile when coming to the digestion in the in the small intestine so we must know what role is the bile play in the small intestine when coming to digestion so a bile it emulsify fats so to, to emulsify fats bile it breaking down fats into smaller droplets so that the fat can be digested in the small intestine so if there is no bile and then it's not going to be easy for fat to be digested and then another thing bile do it neutralize the chyme so chyme is the is this 
product that coming out of the stomach. So in the stomach is acid. So if the time leave the acid there, the stomach, it must be neutralized. So because if it's not neutralized, the acid will destroy the whole of the small intestine. So then if this time it's still acidic and then it reach the small intestine. So some of the enzymes who are working on an alkaline condition, they will not be functioning well. So these are the reason why if there is a blockage in the bile duct and then there, there won't be any digestive process. So to write the answer 2.1.4, we can say bile will not emulsify fats because now the bile will no longer able to enter the small intestine. And then if bile is not able to emulsify fats, therefore lipase will not be able to digest fats. So lipase is an enzyme that is responsible to break down fats into fatty acid. And then another thing, bile will not neutralize the acid chime from the stomach. So now the chime will not, will not be neutralized. And then if the bile is not being neutralized, therefore enzymes secreted by pancreas and the small intestinal gland, they will, will not digest protein and the carbohydrate. So you can see if there, this, if there is a blockage of bile duct and then digestion of protein and the carbohydrate will not work because this time will be acid and then these enzymes that are responsible to break down protein and carbohydrate they are functioning in a alkaline condition so these are the reason why yeah. okay now get to the next question the next question says state with reason why but E is regarded as an endocrine and as well as an exocrine gland. So, but E is an pancreas. So, pancreas is this one. We know that a pancreas is secreting pancreatic juice. So, a pancreatic juice travels via duct. So, if something is secreting something that is traveling via duct, what well, that thing is an exocrine gland. But again, pancreas is secreting insulin and the glucagon. So these are the responsible for the level of sugar in the blood. So these are the hormones. And then when a, a part is secreting a hormone, that gland, we call it endocrine gland. So pancreas, it has a duct and again it's secreting hormones. So that is mean it falls under exocrine gland and endocrine gland. So to answer this question, 2.1.5, uh, we can say part E, which is the pancreas, it acts as an exocrine gland because it has a duct. So because it has a duct, whatever that is secreted by the pancreas, it travels via duct. And then to transport its secretion to the site of action like here the pancreas will secrete pancreatic juice and then the pancreatic juice will travel to the small intestine the action has to be taken in the small intestine and then it also acts as an endocrine gland because it secretes hormones so one of the hormones is an insulin we know that insulin function of the insulin is to reduce sugar level in the blood then that are the release directly into the blood. So these hormones are released directly into the blood and then the hormones to the target organ. So into the blood and then they will travel to the target organ. So that is why it's an endocrine gland and again it's an exocrine gland. So this is how you will answer the questions if you are given the questions like this one. So, grade 11, 
I hope you understand everything that I've just said here. So if you have watched this video to this far, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. So if you are studying, good luck with your studies. Thank you very much. God bless you.